I recently talked about two different bracelets where I would like to analyze the permutations that arise from them. This is the first and what I think is the easier one to analyze. This bracelet has 19 silver beads and 19 directed orange beads. Thanks for watching. This problem is inspired by a bracelet we got during October. The 19 pumpkin shaped orange beads are interlaced with 19 spherical silver beads. We want to know how many different bracelets are possible if we took apart and reassembled the bracelet with the beads in any possible arrangement. We note that for bracelet permutations we cannot tell apart rotations and flips of the bracelet. One thing that makes this different than an ordinary bracelet permutation is that the pumpkin beads are directed, so we are able to tell if they point clockwise or counterclockwise. Since that's not part of usual bracelet permutations, we'll analyze the problem with and without directed orange beads. I'll give the answers right here up front. Very large numbers for both the ordinary beads and for the case where the orange beads are directed. One thing about these bracelet totals is that they include bracelets that are not all equally likely if the bracelet is randomly assembled. We'll talk about relative frequencies then in the details ahead. So let's talk about how we got these numbers and we'll start with the classic bracelet permutation formula often taught in school. When there are n beads, each one a different color, the number of bracelets that can be formed is n minus 1 factorial over 2. Let's see why this works. I think the best way to understand this is to lay out the bracelet in a perfect circle with the beads evenly spaced around the circumference so that the regular polygon is formed with vertices at the beads. Then for every bracelet, there are two end positions that this bracelet can be in. There are n positions possible as we rotate the bracelet one notch at a time until it gets back to where we started. Then if we flip it over, there are another n positions to put the bracelet in for a total of two n. If all the beads are different, then we'll get a different arrangement of beads for all of the two end positions. To see this, just pick two adjacent beads as references. They'll be in different positions for each rotation, so no two rotations will be the same. Then when you flip it over, the two beads will reverse direction, so all of the flipped rotations will be different from the non-flipped. That means for any arrangement of the beads, you can put it in a set with two n other distinct arrangements that can't be distinguished from each other when flips and rotations are allowed. This means that the entire set of fixed permutations, which is just n factorial, breaks down into a number of sets of equivalent permutations where each set has two n elements. Since each set has two n elements, the total number of sets is n factorial over two n, which is just n minus one factorial over two. Each set represents a single bracelet, which has two n different possible arrangements on the regular polygon in the circle. Here we've illustrate this with n equals 4, and show the 24 different fixed permutations broken down into sets of 8. For n equals 4, there is a distinguishing feature of the bracelets. Notice that each set of 8 has the same pairs of beads directly across from each other. Since we have repeats on our bracelet, the formula doesn't hold. We have a bracelet where n equals 38, and although we have many bracelets where the set of arrangements that arise from it has 2n, or 76 arrangements, we also have some bracelets, those with symmetry, that repeat some arrangements as we rotate and flip through all 76 positions. Bracelet permutations with repeats require special analysis to determine the number of bracelets and defy attempts to reduce the answer to a simple formula, and the formulas usually work under narrow conditions. We will derive a formula for bracelets like this. The formula will handle a special case where there are two colors of bracelets, an equal number of each color, and the number of each is an odd prime. On this bracelet, the number of beads of either color is 19, and 19 is an odd prime. So here's a sidebar to talk about why prime numbers are important in the analysis of bracelet permutations. Car tires generally have five lug nuts arranged in a regular pentagon, or six lug nuts arranged in a regular hexagon. If you've ever worked on tires, you know it's best to tighten all of the lugs evenly, spreading the force around. So you don't want to tighten the lugs consecutively. This will be a different experience for five lugs as compared to six. On a five lug tire, instead of tightening consecutively, you can tighten every second lug and you'll encounter every lug before you're back to your starting point. It makes a star pattern. On a six lug tire, you won't get all of the lugs. You'll get back to your starting point with just three of the six lug tightened, and then you'll have to move to the other set of three. Skipping two lugs doesn't work either. This is because five is prime and six is composite. 5 is prime, so we'll be able to tighten all of the lugs whether we do every second lug, every third lug, whatever. 6 is divisible by 2 and 3 is prime factors, so if we tighten every second lug, we'll get two sets of three lugs, and if we tighten every third lug, we'll get three sets of two lugs. 
As far as bracelet permutations are concerned, a 6-beaded bracelet can be analyzed the same way as a 38-beaded bracelet, since they are both two times an odd prime. So let's solve a simpler problem first, the bracelet problem with 3 silver and 3 orange beads. Let's temporarily disallow rotations and flips of the bracelet. Then we use the standard formula for permutations with repeats and get 20 ordinary permutations for the 3 silver and 3 orange beads. As we discussed above, if there were no repeats, all of the bracelets would give us 12 different arrangements as we rotated and flipped them through 12 different orientations that they can have. And then we could divide by 12 to find the number of bracelets. In our current situation, we have 20 fixed permutations, and this is not evenly divisible by 12. That's because some of the patterns have symmetry and yield fewer than 12 equivalent patterns as we go through the 12 rotations and flips that are possible. Let's analyze this. Going back to our six lug tire example, we found that we could tighten two sets of three or three sets of two. Since we have two sets of three beads with the bracelets we're studying, we'll set up the beads on the triangles formed while tightening the lugs and we get a pattern that has rotational symmetry. The beads alternate colors and even though we can rotate the underlying hexagon into six different positions and then flip it over into another six positions for a total of twelve, there are only two different ways that this bracelet will appear. We'll call this the alternating bracelet for obvious reasons. That was rotational symmetry, but what about flips? Flips have lines of symmetry, either through the center of an edge or through a pair of opposite vertices. Lines of symmetry like this that go through the center of an edge are not possible, since there would need to be an even number of beads of each color. With odd numbers of orange and silver beads, we can't make the final pair the same color as needed for symmetry. But if the line of symmetry goes through two vertices instead, then we're in business. Just put one silver and one orange on the line of symmetry, and an even number of each color is left over. This gives us two choices of how to arrange the remaining four beads with the line of symmetry. One of these bracelets is new, and the other is the alternating bracelet we already had. For the new bracelet with the line of symmetry, as we go through the six rotations and six flips, we get only six arrangements. Since it has a line of symmetry, the six flips don't produce anything in addition to the six arrangements we already got by rotating. Since we've covered rotations and both types of lines of symmetry, we're done with symmetry. Any remaining bracelets will need to produce 12 different arrangements in the 12 orientations. There's only one such bracelet possible since there are only 20 arrangements. Here's the non-symmetrical bracelet in its 12 orientations. Let's tally up all the bracelets now. We have the alternating bracelet that has two arrangements, the 3-3 three three bracelet with 6 arrangements, and the 2-2-1-1 two, two, one, one with 12 arrangements. 2 plus 6 plus 12 equals 20, as it must, since the ordinary permutations for the beads equals 20. Now let's look at the relative frequencies for these bracelets. When randomly assembling bracelets, the three bracelets themselves are not equally likely, but the underlying fixed arrangements are, so we need to weight these bracelets accordingly. We have two arrangements out of 20 that give the alternating bracelet, and that's a one-tenth relative frequency. We have six arrangements out of 20 that give the three and three bracelet, and that's three-tenths. And we have 12 out of 20 that give the two, two, one, one bracelet, and that's six-tenths, or two-fifths in lowest terms. If a bracelet is randomly assembled from these beads, you have a much better chance of getting the bottom bracelet at 60% than the top bracelet at just 10%. The same analysis works for larger primes. As long as you have an equal number of silver and orange beads and the number of each is an odd prime, the analysis is the same even though the numbers can get very large. First we note that there is a single alternating bracelet with two arrangements arising from it. Next we count for bracelets that have a single line of symmetry through the opposite vertices. Each of these bracelets has two times p arrangements arising from it. Then we subtract the above arrangements from the number of ordinary permutations and divide by 4 times p in order to get the number of remaining bracelets that have no relevant symmetry. For example, with p equals 5, meaning 5 orange and 5 silver beads, first there's the alternating bracelet. Next for bracelets with a line of symmetry, we have the following. We figure out the number of ways to arrange these four lines for a bracelet with a line of symmetry, and this follows from the ordinary permutations with repeats formula. Four total lines, two silver, two orange, this yields six arrangements. Of these arrangements, one of them will be the alternating bracelet, and the rest will have a single line of symmetry. So there are five that we are interested in for this problem. Continuing with p equals 5, the number of ordinary permutations is 252, then minus 2 for the two arrangements of the alternating bracelet, we get 250, which we note is now divisible by 2 times p, or 10. The number of bracelets with a single line of symmetry is 4 factorial over 2 factorial, 2 factorial minus 1, and that's 5. 
we multiply by 2p, which is 10, and subtract. Subtracting 50, we get 200. Divide the remaining arrangements by 4p, which is 20, to get the number of bracelets without symmetry, and it divides perfectly with no remainder to give 10. So the total number of bracelets that we have is 1 for alternating, 5 for single lines of symmetry, and 10 non-symmetric, total of 16. Relative frequency, 2 over 252 for the alternating, 10 over 252 for those with a single line of symmetry, and 20 over 252 for the remaining. With p equals 7, you can do this as well, and here are the results. We can even come up with a general formula where all you need to do is put in the number p. The formula looks very complicated, but it's really just based on the simple principles we deduced above. The bracelet in our original problem has p equals 19. The numbers are getting larger, but the procedure is completely mechanical now. Here's what the result looks like for p equals 19. And since we have three classes of bracelets with different symmetry, let's spell out the relative frequencies for each and show that they all add up to 1. Now let's take a look at directed beads. The orange beads are actually shaped like pumpkins, and you're able to tell if they point clockwise or counterclockwise. Here's a diagram of one of the many bracelets that can be formed with 19 silver and 19 directed orange beads. Arrows show the way the orange beads are pointing. It seems like directed beads will make the problem much more difficult, and it actually does make the arithmetic harder since the numbers are bigger. Each directed bead introduces a factor of 2 to the number of fixed arrangements to account for the two different directions the beads can point. I have a scientific calculator that can handle the numbers that appear in this problem, so large numbers are not really a concern. On the other hand, the logic becomes simpler because all the lines of symmetry are eliminated. The only lines of symmetry for our previous bracelet went through two vertices, one orange and one silver. When a bracelet is flipped along such a line, the orange bead, which is a directed pumpkin, will go from pointing clockwise to counterclockwise or vice versa. So the pattern will be different. The only symmetry then we can have with directed beads is rotational symmetry, and that is when we have alternating beads. In order pr to preserve the symmetry, all orange beads have to point the same way. There are four arrangements of this alternating unidirectional bracelet as it is rotated and flipped through the 12 positions, and here are the four of them. In the case of directed orange beads and three silver beads, the ordinary permutations when rotations and flips are disallowed needs to be increased by a factor of 2 to the third power to reflect the fact that each of the orange beads can independently point in either of two directions. So we multiply by 2 to the third and get 160. When we subtract the four arrangements that produce the alternating unidirectional bracelet, we get 156 arrangements of bracelets without symmetry. As must be the case, this can be evenly divided by 12 to give the number of bracelets without symmetry, which is 13. In the case with three directed orange and three silver beads, we have a total of 14 bracelets possible, one with symmetry and 13 without. Let's try to enumerate them to verify. For underlying patterns which have the alternating bracelet, we have the alternating unidirectional bracelet, which, as mentioned, is the only bracelet with any kind of symmetry, and an alternating multidirectional bracelet. For the underlying patterns with a 3-3 split, we have a unidirectional where all the beads point the same way, a center flip where the center bead is not pointing the same way as the outside two, we have an in-pointing arrangement where the outside beads are pointing in, and an out-pointing arrangement where the outside beads are pointing out. And finally, for the 2211 bracelet, the underlying pattern is asymmetric, so we can specify a reference orientation, and then eight different bracelets are possible as we go through all possible directions of the orange beads, 2 times 2 times 2. So let's total them all up. We have eight bracelets on this page, four on the previous, and two before that, confirming the 14 bracelets predicted based on deductive reasoning. It's now a simple matter to do this for p equals 19 instead of p equals 3. The numbers will be much larger, but the mechanics are the same. For the relative frequencies, there are only two classes of bracelets, the single alternating unidirectional bracelet in a class by itself, and all the remaining are asymmetric. Put the computations up here for both the number of bracelets and the relative frequencies, and that'll do it for the analysis of the pumpkin bracelet. Next up will be the skull bracelet with eight of each color, a more difficult problem since eight is not prime.